man, you know what? I really like Mario games that weren't made by Nintendo. More specifically, in today's case, we're talking about homebrews. Now, if you're not sure what a homebrew really is, don't worry, because I don't really know either. They're essentially fan games made by fans online and distributed through nefarious means. Some homebrews actually come in a cartridge and can be played on your actual console, while others need to be downloaded online and put on your Wii, I guess, because apparently the Wii is a homebrew hacking powerhouse. So, I figured for our first homebrew adventure, what better game series to check out than the Red Luigi games themselves? with some weird Mario homebrew games and ROM hacks, because I can't really tell the difference between the two. First game we're gonna check out is called Super Mario War. This is a homebrew title that can be downloaded for the Wii via the Homebrew channel. Super Mario War is a really unique title. It's essentially a four-player fighting game using Super Mario Bros. mechanics. Yeah, grab shells, bombs, jump on each other's heads, use power-ups, do whatever you can within 2D Mario rules to wipe out the competition. The game was actually released back in December 14, 2006 for the PC. I really love the simplicity of this game. You can literally just pick up and play the game with four friends. Even if they're not super well-versed in Mario, it doesn't matter. You literally just jump and grab items. I mean, if they can't do that, then all hope is lost. The game is so hectic and crazy, so many items and special effects are flashing on the screen at once. I also really like the roster of characters. It's huge! Way bigger than I would have expected. You can pick between almost any character in the Mario series, enemies included. But then there's also Mega Man, Kirby, Pokemon, Final Fantasy characters, hey, I'm not gonna complain! The game also has a level editor, meaning that the potential number of stages you can play is technically endless. Again, the game is so crazy sometimes that you will end up dying to something that will make you think, WHAT?! WHY DID THAT KILL ME?! THIS GAME IS SUCH BULL! However, rage doesn't tend to happen too often because whenever you die, you respawn before your brain can really process what happened. Essentially, Super Mario War is a cross between Mario Bros, Super Smash Bros, and Mario Maker. That sounds pretty fun. All right, but now here's something that's not exactly pretty fun. Super Mario Galaxy DS. Yeah, not Super Mario Galaxy on the Wii ported to the DS, just Super Mario Galaxy DS. It's a 2D side scroller centered around Mario Galaxy. Yeah, you know, there's the B power up. That's like Mario Galaxy. Mario just looks a little dead inside. But hey, it happens to the best of us. It's honestly pretty impressive considering it came out in 2007. ROM hacks were starting to get popular, but full-on, built-from-the-ground-up kind of fan games were pretty rare. It's also really short considering there's only three stars you can collect. I guess the game isn't finished yet? It was last updated in November 2007. So... Yeah, it's probably almost done. Oh, yeah! I love Super Mario All-Stars! Okay then, just kidding. I love... Uh, Pokemon Mewtwo Strikes Back, featuring Furry Ash. Alright, it's a Pokemon adventure! Sorta. The game starts off in a Nurse Joy house, where we get to choose one of three boxes. Yeah, that's like Pokemon, close enough. What we have here is a Super Mario Bros. 3 ROM hack, where instead of playing as Mario, we take control of Pokemon Abuser Ash. Yeah, what an asshole! Jumping on Squirtles and using their shells as weapons? You know, just because you dress up as Pikachu doesn't mean you can start attacking other Pokemon and jumping on their heads. Again, this is another fairly simple homebrew game, made back in 2007. So, there's not much to really comment on. There's still a lot of Mario assets being used, and there are more impressively themed hacks, but still. For being an early Mario hack, all of the cute Pokemon charm can still be found in a brand new game, with new levels and a new overworld. Oh yeah, I also reached the final boss, and who else would it be in a game called Mewtwo Strikes Back? 
One of the Koopa kids. I don't remember which one. Iggy, I guess. Classic Kong Complete. Completely coherent c title. Here we have another homebrew game for the Super Nintendo, made by our lovely friends up north in Canada! Thanks for the syrup. So, what do we have here? Mm-hmm. Yes, I see. This is Donkey Kong. Let me be more clear. This game is Donkey Kong. This, however, I don't even know who you are. Same goes to you, Goldilocks. You don't exactly look like Pauline, so I don't really feel inclined to save you. But good old granddad over here does, so I guess that's what really matters. The game is honestly pretty good. I mean, it's 80s Donkey Kong, but updated with Super Nintendo graphics and sound. They could have been really lazy and used the Super Mario World and Donkey Kong Country sprites, despite being completely stylistically different, but they didn't. It looks good, sounds good, and controls really well. Also, whenever Donkey Kong steals Pauline, you get a broken heart. Come on, don't I get enough of those already? <laughs> Oh, this game rules! Alright, so this is, um, Peach's Adventure. The demo, I guess, starring Princess Peach. A little bit of a reinterpretation of the princess. As in, I'd like to reinterpret my into her. Wow, pardon me, I don't know what came over me. So yeah, we got a thick princess here, and I'm not one to judge at all. Hey, bake more cakes while you're at it, you know? It's clearly, it's clearly what you enjoy. Man, I didn't even know the Super Nintendo was capable of jiggle physics, but Princess Peach, you're always full of surprises. All right, so thick jokes aside, this ROM hack is easily one of the most impressive fan games I've ever seen. Here, the roles are reversed from the traditional Mario story. Mario is missing, and Peach has to save the day. You'll be traversing all kinds of beautiful and stunning levels. Seriously, the game must be pushing the Super Nintendo sound chip to the absolute limit with the music and sound effects that are used. I didn't even know that was possible on the Super Nintendo. 16-bit renditions of songs are my weakness. I love trying to figure out, what song is this? What game is this from? This is ROM hacking at its absolute best, and you can tell that it was made with passion. Just look at the little details. Peach's face actually reacts to whatever's going on. Every stage feels so alive and somehow visually different compared to any 16-bit Mario game, while still using assets from existing Mario games. It's really weird, and I don't know how to describe it. It just looks better. What a great observation. By the time of this video's release, the game still isn't finished, but it makes sense why this is taking a while. This isn't some crappy Mario Maker level that I'd make. Peach's adventure actually has loads of effort and care thrown into it. So give it a download and play it. There's still loads to explore within this demo. Also, it's got thick Peach. I mean, that'll please all the weirdos out there. As in me. I'm the weirdo. Alright, what else do we have? Suu Epper Mario. And apparently it's for noobs. This is an absolute nightmare. Oh, Jesus! This is Super Ma 14. Uh. Yeah, it's probably not important anyway. Holy crap, this is a mess! What a glitched out paradise. I guess the ultimate test is figuring out what the heck you can actually jump on and what you'll fall through. I feel the need to take out and blow on the cartridge to fix this. But it's a ROM hack on my computer, so I can't do that. I could always blow on my PC. It didn't work. So those were some weird and interesting Mario homebrew games. I hope you liked them as much as I did. Let me know what other hacked games you'd like to see next. I love being a hacker. Just as much as I love... Thick Peach's Cake. Bada boom!